All right, so here's my video. It's an example of optimization. We have a cone-shaped cup that holds three cubic centimeters of water. We want to find the height and radius of the cup that will use the smallest amount of paper. And we get two hints. The first hint is that the volume of a cone is one-third pi r squared h, and the surface area of a cone is a equals pi times r times the square root of r squared plus h squared. Okay, to find the minimum amount of paper to use, it's also helpful to think about what's the most amount of paper that you could use. You could take this really thin cup, like extremely skinny and narrow, really tall. You can imagine making a cup that, that would hold that volume of water, three cubic centimeters, but very, very, very thin and that uh, very, very skinny, and that would use a lot of paper. Or you could use a very fat cup, like very, very fat cup like this, very short. Yeah, but even even shorter than that, and even and another one even thinner than that, you could make these really obscene dimensions and use a tr tremendous amount of paper to hold that volume. What you want is the smallest one, the smallest amount of paper that, that would hold that volume of, of water. So I'll draw a picture of what that would look like. It looks something like this. Yeah, it'd be something that looked like a cup. There's a reason why cups have that shape. It's they use a small amount of material for a given volume. And the information that's given, or the formulas that are given, correspond to h being the height of the cone, and r being the, this the radius at the top of the cone there. What we want to do is make this equation as small as possible. Find the value of a, find the value of r and h that would minimize the surface area, while still giving us three cubic centimeters of volume. Problem is when we take the derivative a prime. We have a function of r and h. We don't know how to take a function of more than one variable yet. That's a second year calculus topic, or sometimes in, uh, I guess, Math 25 you learned there. But we don't know how. So what we have to do first is make this an equation, a equals a function of just r or a function of just h. It doesn't matter which one we do, both will work. The method we're going to use to do that is to use this volume formula. We give us the volume formula. They give us the volume. We set them equal to each other. So V equals one third pi r squared times h. And V is equal to three. So three equals one third pi r squared h. Cross multiply, divide by the pi, uh, nine over pi equals r squared h. Now, our choice, this is where the choice happens. Do we isolate for h or do we isolate for r? And it honestly doesn't matter which one you do. The math will work out a little bit differently when you take the derivative, but the end result will be the same. So let's go with isolating for r squared. According to this, r squared is going to be 9 over pi times h. Now we're going to rewrite our area formula with that. We get a formula in terms of just h. So a equals pi times, well, before we do that, let's, let's rewrite this r as the square root of r squared. And we have r squared plus h squared. And if we have the root of a times the root of b, we can write that as the root of a times b. Bring that, that r squared inside the root. So pi times the square root of r squared times r squared, which is r squared squared, plus r squared times h squared. Now we'll substitute our value for r squared in, in terms of h. So we have pi times the square root of nine over pi h squared plus nine over pi h times h squared. So we we'll replace this r squared with nine over pi h. Put brackets around there, make it more clear that that's the same thing as the r squared. And we replace the r squared with nine over pi h, but it was r squared squared, so this nine over pi h is all squared. Next step, pi outside, 
square root of 81 over pi squared h squared from that term plus 81 h squared over oh sorry there's no squared there it's just a 9 just a 9 I'll go back there's no squared on that so 9 still a 9 and a pi h on the bottom we have an h squared on top and an h squared on the bottom. So for the next line, we do some simplifying. We haven't taken any derivatives yet. We just subbed in. We have 81 over pi squared times h to the negative 2. That's the first term. Bring 1 over h squared is h to the negative 2. Plus h squared over h is h over pi. And there's a 9 in front, so 9h over pi. Okay, that is our function in terms of h. So we have area, an area function in terms of the variable h, and what we want to do next is find, find the max and min of this. So that's the next video.